Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights. I am a strategist at Fathom, and I'm really excited to welcome you to the first episode in a brand new series of uh, really just how to learn Marketo. So there's a lot of great resources all over the internet. Um, Docs.marketo.com is probably the one we all know about as Marketo users, uh, as well as uh, Marketo University. So that's learn.marketo.com. Uh, there's some there's some excellent paid training there from Marketo. Um, but in terms of like a really up-to-date resource for visual learners like me, uh, I'm, I'm, let me back up. I'm also forgetting about all the amazing uh, Marketo champions and bloggers out there like Josh Hill's Marketo Rockstar's Guide, uh, or Marketing Rockstar's Guide, and uh, just a litany of other, other excellent resources of information on the community. Um, but if you're a visual learner like me, you really need to see it done to uh, to really internalize that info and make it into something um, you can use. So uh, that's where this comes in. So I'm calling this tentatively Marketo Foo and how to how to grow stronger Marketo Foo. So being client side now for a few months, I've realized that there's a lot of different, uh, most teams have a desire to have at least one person on their team learn more. And basically everybody always wants to learn more and understand how to achieve some of their objectives in digital marketing um, just on their own. So uh, it, it's one of those scenarios of like teach a man to fish and add value and yeah. So that's what this series is going to be. Uh, every I'm doing it on YouTube live so it's going to be very, uh, very rough and unedited and you might hear a dog barking, you might see Marketo freeze. Uh, but one of my most prized uh, personal attributes is just when people are genuine. So you will get complete genuineness from me and you'll get complete genuineness from the platform. So I think that's a really, um, really good place to start in terms of just learning anything is, is honesty and openness. So um, with that, uh, what I kind of want to do for this first episode, knowing that I want to keep these short is, uh, yeah, that's my dog. Uh, if you go over to, uh, well, let me share my screen. Well, that's an infinite loop. Okay, so sharing my screen. If you uh, if, when you log into Marketo, uh, all I want to overview now is just the various modules. So uh, we're looking at at the Fathom Sandbox right now, but uh, what you see here might be different depending on your subscription. So uh, core to every user, you're always going to have the marketing activities tile, design studio, lead database, and analytics, uh, and you'll also have community. You may see real-time personalization, web personalization, RTP, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you have RCA, you'll see that here too, as well as SEO. Um, I believe calendar shows up as well. And then um, now, new as of last week, ABM, if you have it. So I'm just going to take a quick dive through each of these and we'll expound on them in further detail in future videos. But when you look in the marketing activities folder, this is, and forgive the the mess. This is just our sandbox, so it's where we do a lot of testing. But this is where all of your campaigns and everything that you do in Marketo actually lives. So um, when I blow out my folder, I have a few just kind of best practice uh, programs built out in terms of naming conventions and you know how they're structured and things like that. So um, we'll, we'll I'll dive through in another video very soon on what each of these program types is and when you'd use each one. But uh, for now, just know that marketing the marketing activities folder is where all of the actual programs you're going to create are going to live. Now, if you go up to this, uh, I think Marketo calls it the bouncing super ball. If you go up to the, the super ball and you go down to design studio now, this is where all your templated files live. So your forms, landing pages, emails, and what Marketo calls a snippet as well as uh, all the images and files that drive everything. So um, when you want to embed a file into your email, um, Let's just do this. Uh, you would say, you know, I'm going to look at this JPEG, whatever it is. And then I'm going to copy this and then use that as the image source code at the reference. And I'll show you how to do that in another video. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, all your landing page templates, forms, and emails live here. What a snippet is, is like a dynamic piece of content that you might swap in and out uh, based on, you know, segmentation or another audience type factor. So, if that, if that was total Greek to you, don't worry. We'll cover it in a future video. 
Next up is the lead database. So back up to the ball, down to lead database. Uh, this will show you your overall number of leads that are marketable in your database. And if you hover over this somewhere, yeah, it'll say how many total leads are in your database and how many of them are marketable. The difference there being um, you know, valid email addresses. So obviously this is a sandbox, so we have a very small number of, uh, of people. These are essentially 100% internal. Um, but some cool things you can see is there's a bunch of system smart lists that are by default. You can look at all leads, the ones that have unsubscribed, marketing suspended, uh, blacklist, meaning you can blacklist your competitors or, um, you know, one use case I've seen that's kind of interesting is uh, schools can sometimes blacklist um, students of a certain age range or, or, or something like that. Uh, but most commonly competitors and that kind of thing. Uh, you can look at all your bounces and make sure that you're keeping your database healthy and that there's not a lot of these, and as well as keep a handle on any duplicates. The last thing here is just this no acquisition program. Uh, this is something I'm going to dive into on a video very soon on just one-on-one -on -one basics, like how you need to set up and, and drive every program from a data quality standpoint. But uh, this, if there's a lot of people in here, you can have issues with reporting later. And then finally, my favorite area, the, the analytics section. So when you come here, you see all the tiles for um, just the various types of default reports you can run. Now these are not the revenue cycle analysts or analytics reports that you would, uh, that you would see that report ROI, first touch, multi-touch acquisition, all that. These are gonna be more, you know, email performance is vanity metrics, lead performance gives you down to the individual lead and uh, you can really drill down and see some good trends and data with, with that. Um, and then a bunch of other reports that are, are very useful. If you have Sales Insight, you can kind of see how your salespeople are in, engaging with your, your, your emails, how many they're sending, who's sending the most, what is the most sent email, that kind of thing. So you know what's useful to your sales team. And then uh, the other one that I wanna just briefly touch on is this leads by revenue stage. This, if you have a built out revenue cycle model, which I don't believe these are final, but um, let's look at a Marketo example. So how these basically work, and we'll dive in it on a future video, is this is how what you tie your, uh, your whole life cycle to, so how leads progress through the funnel. And this is the, the one that comes default in every system. Uh, you're definitely going to have either wanted to or will want to add uh, transition conditions and, and uh, recycle opportunities and that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, I know that was a lot very quickly, but uh, oh, let me unshare my screen. Cool. So this has been the first episode of Marketo Foo. I, uh, I'm looking forward to recording many more with you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to do this on a daily basis again, and uh, yeah, can't wait. So that's it.